So you want to play like Maynard, huh? Yeah, it, you and about you know a million other people do too. So we're going to talk a little bit about the desire to play like Maynard, and then the reality, and some people's very close attempts to play and sound like Maynard, and some people's attempts to sound like Maynard thinking that they do, but they really don't. And we're talking about some of, some of Maynard's most famous lead trumpet players. And some of these guys are um, some of the A-list players in L.A. and New York and Chicago. We're going to find out what the difference is. First of all, if you're listening to this and you don't have your range up to a pretty good level, I would stop this video and immediately go to my website, trumpetsizzle.com, and get enrolled in the 16-week upper register program. You're wasting your time. Maynard is about having the the acumen and the facility and the power in the upper register. And if you don't have that, then this video is just a waste of your time. It might motivate you um, to get busy and start working on your range. But frankly, I'm talking to people that either have already developed their range or are thinking about playing lead or they already play lead or they've already even tried to play some Maynard before in rehearsal or at a concert. We're going to be talking about some of the things that cause people to not sound like Maynard. In fact, I guess it was about a year ago, I had some hate, hater idiot that said that you sound like Maynard, but why don't you play your own way? You know, why don't you be yourself? You know, why don't you do your own thing? You know, why are you trying to copy Maynard? And my response to this individual, without all the expl explicatives, like F you and Mother Effer and, you know, all that kind of stuff, was pretty much this. Maynard is a style. He's not only an individual and a player, but he created a style. So that would be like asking some organist on Easter morning or in the holiday season, what in the world are you thinking? You know, you're trying to copy, you know, um, Handel. Why? Why don't you just do your own thing? Hey, what are you thinking? You're sounding like Bach. Hey, what are you thinking? That, uh-uh-uh. That symphony is, uh, 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 no, it sounds like Beethoven. What are you thinking? Why don't you just play your own way? It is because some of us music, musicians like the style of a particular composer, era, or individual. And we want to play in that style. We want to sound like that. That is a style. So who in their right mind would play Brahms and try to sound like Scott Joplin, Right? Ridiculous. So when we're talking about trying to sound like Maynard, trying to play like Maynard, what we're really saying is we want to play with his style, in the style of Maynard Ferguson. Can anybody ever play like Maynard? Uh-uh. No. <laughs> Even the people that come closest still do not play exactly like Maynard. It's impossible. He was a one of a kind. So no matter how hard you try to copy Maynard, the best that can happen to you is you become better because you have some of the essence of his playing in yours, but you will never be a Maynard clone. Nobody is. Let's get that out of the out of the way. So when we're trying to play in a particular style, we can call player Maynard Ferguson a style. He had a style. And his style was very smooth, rounded, singable, powerful style. And which is not a lead trumpet style, and that's where the problem is for you folks that already play lead, that already have range. And I'm going to do some demonstrations on what I've heard. Um, people, and I'm talking about some high-powered, high-caliber people that came from Maynard's band. And uh, one of them gets all the gigs in L.A., it seems like. Gets all, just about every gig. And he's been featured on several Maynard. He's never done a Maynard tribute. A Maynard tribute means you got to get out there and face the audience uh, in my opinion, at least eight songs, eight Maynard songs by yourself. That's a Maynard tribute by one individual. So this particular person I'm talking about has never done a Maynard Ferguson tribute like I have, like Eric Miyashiro has, like a uh, guy up in New York, Ron Reski has. But this guy is a top dog in L.A. I think we all know who we're talking about, but I'm not going to mention names. He's never done a Maynard Ferguson tribute, eight songs on a concert at least, and no stand if you're going to play in the style of Maynard, you do not use a stand and bury your freaking head in the stand. Hello? <laughs> Are you kindergartners out there? Maynard was not only about his style, but he was about his connection with the audience. 
I think on some new charts you might have seen him go over there and glance at a stand, possibly. But on the songs that he knew well, he got right out there in front and wanted to connect with the audience. And being buried in a stand, like you're the studio sight-reading fool that you are. You know who I'm talking about, Mr. L.A. guy. That's not Maynard. Uh Uh-uh. If you have to have your eyes locked on every note on a solo that you've been playing for 20 years by Maynard, that's not Maynard. Okay, you just totally missed it. So, Maynard played Maynard is in playing a particular style. It doesn't mean that you're going to turn into a Maynard clone. You let me know when you find someone that's turned into a Maynard Ferguson clone that plays exactly like Maynard. I want to find out who that would be because so far that's never happened, ever. So, now that you know what we're talking about, we're talking about playing in a particular style, the Maynard Ferguson style. We want to play in that style because he set the bar for having this ridiculously melodic, lullaby, cantabile type of sound in the upper register that almost sounded like he was singing on a lot of the charts, right? Yeah. So I'm going to pick out a couple of songs um, that are well-known, not some of his more obscure ones, but they're well-known and people try to play. And I'm going to try to differentiate on how the style would be correct for Maynard, the Maynard style, and how it would be incorrect if you're playing it as a lead trumpet player. There's a difference. So what? let's see, let's try to find something. I have no music in front of me. Look around. I'm in a practice room. Um, The only thing I have in front of my stand, I got some Clark, baby. (laughs) So, I don't have any Maynard music in front of me. It's going to have to come from my head. I got Herbert L. Clark there, but that's not going to help us out with the Maynard. So, we can take what I consider one of his easier charts, and um, this is one that a lot of people can start working on if you haven't worked on Maynard Ferguson and the style, which would be My Funny Valentine. Now, we're not going to go through the easy ballad stuff in the beginning. We're trying to capture the part where people really screw up. Not necessarily screw up the notes, as far as missing notes or accuracy, but screw up the style, and they end up sounding like a lead player. So nearing the end, it's kind of like the push. Um, let me see if I can get my bearings. singable part in My Funny Valentine near the end that Maynard just sounds wonderful on. And I've actually gotten pretty close of capturing the Maynard Maynard style myself on that particular section. And that's when when people actually work with me and learn the Maynard. We work on that one, one of the first ones. Um, It doesn't go too terribly high. Now, I've heard countless lead players and some from Maynard's band play it like this. Sorry. Maynard's birthday of 2016, which is on May 4th, you're going to hear people pop up playing some of the Maynard stuff. I'm confident of it. In fact, I heard there's a big shindig, a big shindig in LA with some of the Maynard's alumni. Now, I want you to use this tutorial and listen to what they do. You're going to notice almost all of them, except for probably Eric Miyashiro and maybe one other person, is going to sound like the lead trumpet player trying to play in the Maynard style, not playing the Maynard style. 
Don't take my word for it. Watch this video right before you see some of these guys play, and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And no, they aren't trying to play in their own style or play with their own personality. That, Like, again, that would be like playing Toccata and Fugue in D minor and, and you know, playing it like um, <laughs> you're some kind of jazz piano player, right? Or playing it like um, uh, Barry Manilow, right? Uh-uh. No, when you play in the style of something, you play in that style. You can bring in whatever you want from your own personality, but you play in that style. You don't screw up the style, okay? And you're going to hear these lead trumpet players screw up the Maynard style. They're going to get the high notes, they're going to get the notes, but they're screwing up the style. Just like I did on My, fu my Funny Valentines. So, playing it like a lead player, you smack the notes harder than you normally would, just like you would in lead. mentality. Lead playing the Maynard Ferguson solo. No, you've just totally screwed up the entire style, my lead playing friend. So that's one example about why even people that are the top professional level lead players cannot seem to play like Maynard and play in that style. They're playing like a lead player, right? Lead player. of harsh articulations and pops and um, percussive attacks that go right along with the rhythm section. No, we're not playing that way when we're playing Maynard. Lead trumpet player. Turn on a light bulb. Think. Let's go on to a harder example now. What would be harder? Okay, a lot of people try to attempt this particular song. And most crash and burn on it, but the ones that actually get through it are not sounding like Maynard. So, again, you know I don't have the music in front of me, and I'm having to do this off the cuff. I'm just trying to get the song in my head. Let me see if I can get it. recognize that that's from the big push um, kind of in the middle of the piece of Danny Boy um, from way 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 on back way 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 back I believe that probably was in the 60s um, or maybe you know what it might have even been in um, could have been the 50s too when you first started getting that one going well you hear a lot of people trying that one you can go on YouTube right now and see a lot of people doing that one will it sound like I just did mm -mm. Mm -mm. so the lead player approach on this one who hasn't thought about the Maynard Ferguson style, which is a style, is going to play it something like this. all the right notes didn't I yeah for the most part but it sucks if you're trying to play it in the Maynard style that's a lead trumpet style that I just did there in fact I could have even overdid it more than what I just did so the the singability style makes the solo not your high notes or how loud you can play or how rough you can attack stuff lead trumpet players out there that's another example Danny Boy listen to everybody playing Danny Boy except for Eric Miyashiro and it's going to sound kind of like I did on the um, lead trumpet part of my demonstration here okay let's move on to uh, some other ones now MacArthur Park MacArthur Park is the one that everybody tries. This is one that features that top L.A. trumpet player who's got his, um, <laughs> he looks like this when he's playing. He's in the stand, he's playing like this. 
He's played this a million times, but he's still got his nose and his horn buried in the stand. Yeah, totally not playing the style of Maynard. And then his playing is not in the style of Maynard. People go ooh and ah because he's hitting high notes. I don't go ooh and ah on his playing at all, ever, zero, nada. So, what is he doing that's not in the appropriate style of playing Maynard? Well, let's see what part of MacArthur Park are we going to pick. Um... Let's see here. I guess maybe near the front of it. about the same thing, right? Except when you watch some of his live stuff and he's getting a little bit funky. Um, and sometimes he does when he's when he's doing some of the live stuff, like I like the Maynard Ferguson stuff. Okay, so now how would you screw up the Maynard style on that one and make it sound more like a lead trumpet player playing that particular song and not playing correctly in the Maynard Ferguson style? You would do it like this. trumpet player mentality coming in at a, what could have been a gorgeous, beautiful, singable, melodic solo, and you're pounding it, and you're pounding it, and you're pounding it like a lead trumpet player. Almost like the whole agenda is just to get the high notes popping out loud. You totally screwed it up, Mr. L.A. studio guy from Mandy Ferguson, old-timey band. You screwed it up. How come you can't play it like Maynard? Like I just did. Because you're missing the point and port part of the style. Okay? It's not about playing lead trumpet with the Maynard solo. It's about playing the Maynard Ferguson solo style. Which this person obviously, until now, still hasn't got. Let's go on to another one. Yet another one. So, this one's one that is also very famous. You might even hear it on May 4th when they do the tribute. Let me see if I can remember how it goes. Um, yeah, that's it. theme and the Rocky theme does have a little bit more punch, percussive, articulated tacks um, than say some of the other ballad solos that uh, we were talking about earlier. So the lead players that are playing this that were in Maynard's band can somewhat get away with having that lead player mentality because um, that's just kind of the style, part of the style of this one. But still there should be a flowing, effortless uh, and connectedness with the solo. So how can I make this solo less like Maynard and more like a lead, more like an L.A. top-tier, world-class, A-group lead player? Tell the difference in that it was a choppy, lots of taking air air brakes and stuff like that to make sure you're getting the high notes, as opposed to the nice 
smooth, singable style that should be in that particular piece. But like I said before, it is a rock disco piece, so there is going to be more punch to it than the typical Maynard Ferguson style. So that's why the lead players, if you hear this on May 4th, they're going to get away with um, being a little bit more punchy with it and still making it sound close to the style. But by take, throwing in all these air brakes and some of the things that they're doing, it, it, it totally takes away from the style, in my opinion. Okay, so let's see if there's any more Maynard Ferguson things to talk about. Um... But maybe the Gospel John thing, right? close to the Maynard and Ferguson style. If you're a lead trumpet player, playing that, just thinking it's all about the high notes, you're going to end up sounding like this. typical lead player coming at the Gospel John Maynard Ferguson solo and playing it as though a lead player, lead trumpet player would. Um, is he getting the notes? Pretty much. Is it loud? Yes, that was loud. Is it really in the style of Maynard? No. Maynard would never play, um, he would never play Gospel John like that. That's how a lead trumpet player would approach that solo and not Maynard Ferguson. So anyway, I hope I've turned on the light bulb for you lead trumpet players that have thought about playing Maynard or you already have and then you you look, go back and look and you're thinking there's something missing at, something missing in my performance. Why? I just don't sound like Maynard. I just don't got that style. What's going on? So just forgive yourself because you'll never be Maynard, but you can sound and get the style like Maynard because that's what we're after. Again, if we're going to play um, for at least da, 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 de, da, da, right by Beethoven. We're not going to play it at those would be the right notes, but the wrong freaking style because we're trying to play in the style of Beethoven. And here we're trying to play in the style of Maynard Ferguson. If you're trying to play in the style of Maynard Ferguson, by God, play in the style of Maynard Ferguson and not some lead trumpet player that's chopping it up with a big old hacksaw. Okay, that's my tutorial on playing in the style of Manor Ferguson and trying to play like him versus just going for the high notes as a professional lead trumpet player and being satisfied and all, all smug with yourself that you got the high notes. Uh-uh. No, you missed it. And then this stand... If you got the stand in front of you and you're playing a Maynard Ferguson tribute or solo and you got your eyes buried in that stand, you have so freaking missed the point of Maynard and the connectedness that Maynard had with his audience. You've just totally missed it. Watch on May 4th if there's a tribute concert. Watch how many people that played with Maynard Bink! missed it. Missed it. Maynard never came out hunched. With his eyes and his horn buried in the stand, playing the solo. Never did that. I mean, come on, folks. So, if you're trying to play Maynard, rewind this video and watch over and over and over again, and you just might be able to get some of this into your playing and sound better. For those of you who have the range and have some lead but would like to start venturing out playing Maynard Ferguson stuff, I'm telling you, it is the hardest part that you can do on the horn. Playing Maynard Ferguson or, or another written high note solo, whether it be Doc Severinsen or Bill Chase, really doesn't matter. When you are playing the written high note solo, folks, there's nothing else, there's no other harder music for you to play. 
And I know this for a fact. I got a video I'm going to put up where I made my living playing the Carnival of Venice all summer long, five shows a day. Okay? I've done that. I played all the toughest Empire Empire Brass and Canadian Brass Quintet music. I've done it all. I played all the hardest piccolo pieces. Michael Hyde, Brandenburg, uh, the toughest Vivaldi piece on piccolo. I've warmed up on the Hindemith. I played the Humble and the Haydn. I've done the Tomasi. I played Alan Vizzuti's Cascades. I've done it all. And then I played the hardest lead trumpet parts known to man. What's the hardest thing? None of that. The hardest thing is to stand up, pick up your horn, walk out in front of the band. It's you and the mic or you and the audience. And to play that known written high note solo that everybody knows. So second book, jazz player, there's no finger wiggling your way out of this one, my friends. There's no taking the horn off and listen to the, the rhythm section do a little something while you're resting your chops. Uh, when you play the written high note solo, it's game on. It's you play to the end. You make it or you don't. It is the hardest. I've been it all. It is the hardest. Don't believe me? Let's put you to the test. I'll pick two Maynard Ferguson solos for you, and we'll go to a rehearsal big band, and we'll make you step out front and play it. Got to play it from memory, too. What's the point of burying your nose in the stand? That's not Maynard. Then we'll see what you think. It's tough love, baby, and you need it.